Welcome to Tech Photo Blog. This is episode number 65. So one of the more popular video blogs I've done uh, in the past was where I had uh, set up a camera axe and took photos of people crossing a finish line at a race. And, uh, you know, that was pretty cool, but uh, some people came to me and asked if I could make a much more professional device that really, you know, was weatherproof and more robust and did a better job at taking the photos. And uh, this is what I came up with. They were kind enough to let me share this uh, technology with everyone else. So I said I'd put up a video about it. And uh, that's what I'm going to talk about today. So the idea is that this is a weatherproof box. Um, here's a weatherproof uh, sonar that detects people as they're running across the finish line or a strategic position in the race. And then on this side, it's got uh, weatherproof 3.5 millimeter jacks for your camera one and your camera two. And then uh, on the bottom, there's a nice big plate here to mount a tripod. It's got a standard tripod mount here. So on the inside, which I'll show you in a little bit, there's a ca actually a, a camera axe. And uh, I've uh, used a new protocol to uh, interface with this sensor. So I'll uh, be releasing the software for that and that'll be linked to in, this, uh, in, in the notes for this uh, video. And uh, I'll also have all of, a, a full parts list so people who have a camera axe can uh, build their own. Now let's get into a little bit more of the technical detail. So I put together this little diagram to make sure that the finish line trigger is going to fit the needs of the uh, people who are asking me to make it. And, uh, you know, I've been talking to them for a while, and this is sort of just a quick mock-up I did to uh, sort of show its capabilities and make sure it was going to fit the needs. And they said it was, so we went forward with it. But the idea here is that uh, they often have one of those inflatable finish lines and uh, here's a photo of one. I was actually in a triathlon a few weeks ago and uh, ran through this one myself a little later after this photo was taken. But uh, the idea is that you've got one of those and that limits the uh, distance that the uh, trigger needs to work on. So, you know, this is typically, you know, 10 feet, maybe a little bit more of distance. So um, based on that, I picked an ultrasonic sensor that uh, connects to this uh, trigger and that will sort of cover up to 25 feet width which is wide enough for all of the inflatable finish lines I've seen and also should work in many other places on the course. Also point out that this could be used for wildlife photography or other things where you just want a, a plug-in solution that sort of triggers when something sort of passes this zone and it's it's kind of this two foot wide beam that's coming out of this ultrasonic sensor. It's much narrower than the standard ultrasonic sensor I uh, have for the camera axe. It's a Pretty nice sensor, much more expensive, but uh, really robust and, and weatherproof in this case. And then you'd plug the camera into this trigger box that I'm sort of showing you today, and that would take a photo. And you can actually plug two cameras in, so maybe you want to have one here, and one a little farther back, or you know, position the two cameras wherever you want. And then uh, over here, you can sort of see the idea is that um, I had decided to control this sensor that I was plan planning on using. You'd need uh, both of the sensor cables and then the two camera cables would go out here and you know it's all going to be weatherproof and um, the tripod mount so it's easy to mount and uh, we should be good to go there. And then here's a little bit more detailed schematic I actually drew up to make sure I got everything wired correctly. So if you're actually building your own this is probably what you're going to live off of. Um, the idea is that you've got the two camera cables, those go to the outside, the weatherproof ports here, and you've got the two sensor cables, and you're going to use the tip of sensor one and the base of sensor one to drive um, V plus and ground on the sensor, and these are actually marked on the, the sensor like this, so that makes it very easy. And then um, the sensor is controlled via a protocol called I squared C, and uh, in order to drive that, I use the tip 
going to pin 5 on the sensor and the middle ring going to um, uh, pin 4 on the sensor. And if you're familiar with I squared 2, uh, I squared C, that's um, SCL is, is on 5 and SDA is on uh, pin number 4. So that sort of describes that. So now I have these thumb screws on the case here. I'm just taking off. So I put these on because it makes it much easier to get the case apart. And uh, inside the case here, let's just flip it around. What we've got is a camera axe. And uh, we've got the camera, we've got the cables labeled here um, for the sensors. And I've sort of described how all these are plugged in. So I won't go into that right now. Um, one thing I did want to show you is that there's these two little guys here that are labeled as none. And I've actually put 1K resistors in there. This is a modification I did uh, to the camera. So the, the pads are there. I just never populate them. Um, and they say none on the board. If you take apart your camera axe, they'll have that as well. And uh, what that does is that provides a, a pull-up resistor for the I2C bus. And that's not normally attached. So you can actually make the modification either in the camera axe, which is nice because I put the pads there and it's, it's easy to do. Uh, you just need a surface mount uh, 1K resistor. Or you could actually, if you want to keep your camera axe working for other things, you could just put the 1K resistors, um, you know, here. And basically you need to pull up these pins. So what you'd want to do is you'd want to put a 1K resistor between V plus to this SCL pin or pin 5 and a, uh, another 1K resistor from V plus to, to pin 4. So that, that's kind of what you can do. You either need to do it here in the uh, sensor or on the camera axe. The camera axe has the pads and the, the person who's using this is only planning to use it for this sensor. So I just made a permanent change modification to the camera axe. So uh, if you were doing any other I squared C devices, you'd have to do the same sort of thing uh, to pull up the resistor. There is a pull up resistor in the chip, but that basically just doesn't provide enough um, pull up to uh, make a bus of this length. I actually saw it was kind of sort of working, but uh, wasn't working reliably. And, and therefore, the, I just decided the internal pull-up resistors um, aren't going to be good enough. So I had to put these other um, pull-up resistors here. And that was the only change to the camera axe. So that's pretty much all of the changes I had to make to the device. And I think now it's time to show the software. So now I'll show you the software. I was asked to make this software as simple to use as possible, so I, I tried to do that. It, but I included the features that I thought would be important while keeping it easy to use. Uh, so um, the first one is the trigger width and feet. And the idea here, it's currently set to 10 is that um, that's sort of the distance from this sensor right here to the um, area you want to trigger in. So if it's set to 10 feet, that means anything closer than 10 feet to this sensor would trigger it. Anything farther than that would not. So that's good because you can ignore the crowd on the other side of the finish line um, and only trigger if somebody's running through the finish line. So we've got that. Um, we've also got, um, you can see that the backlight goes off if you don't touch it for 10 seconds. I thought that would be a good way to conserve power. Uh, we've got uh, camera one delay. So that's the number of milliseconds from when it's triggered until the uh, first tr camera triggers. Um, and uh, you, you'd want to set that if you wanted to, you know, delay your triggering of one of your cameras by a little bit or something. Uh, I don't think that'll be too commonly used. You know, to start with, definitely just start uh, using zero and see what happens. 
so uh, camera one low latency so this basically tricks your camera into staying into a high power state so if you want your camera battery to last longer you'd put this to no but uh, most cameras will have no t problems you know triggering for an entire race with this set to yes and then you'll have less lag and less variance uh, in your camera uh, your camera lag is much larger than the lag from this device so um, if things are too slow and you have this set to no change it to yes and, and that'll um, probably improve the uh, uh, reliability of your shots and, and reduce the delay that's uh, imposed by your camera and then we've got the same settings your delay for your second camera and your low latency for your second camera and then time between shots is basically how long you want to wait between shots in milliseconds so with this set to 200 milliseconds that means that if you had a you know a couple of people right next to each other all running through the finish line um, at the same time it would probably only take one photo for that group now, this is something you're you're probably going to want to play around with a little bit i tried to pick 200 as a, a good standard value um, so if people are more than you know a fifth of a second or 200 milliseconds apart it'll take multiple shots if people are closer than that then it will take a, a single shot and that's all the settings in the software it's pretty easy to use these here are the defaults and most likely the only one you'll really want to change is uh, the width of the finish line so you just push select and you can adjust it to whatever you want so um, oh one other important thing is this three number that's basically telling you how far it's seen until it collides so this can help you set it up so if I put my hand right in front of the sensor like I have right now you see that drops down to zero um, if I put it out a little farther it'll go to one so you can sort of put somebody where you think they're going to be in the finish line uh, or you know where you want uh, the the line to stop and sort of get a feeling for um, that or you can use a tape measure and just measure out the distance to where the uh, audience might be and uh, you know put in that trigger width so either way will work and uh, this, this little number here is just sort of a help um, to get you set up so that's the software. Now we're going to do some real world tests. So here's how the finish line trigger would be set up at a race. You have your camera and that's set to manual focus and is actually going to be pre-focused at the distance you want to take a photo of the runners. And that's connected via a standard uh, cable for the camera axe to the finish line trigger. And uh, here you can see in the back that it's plugged in um, just a camera one slot and I've got all of the defaults on the software set and uh, basically when anything goes in front of that you can hear that it triggers so across here it'll trigger and that's pretty much the setup it's quite simple it just takes two tripods a camera and the uh, finish line trigger Okay, so now we're going to try it out and see if it's actually working. Success. So a quick summary of my testing is that I found that this sensor works out to about a 10 foot line and uh, beyond that it doesn't always detect a person. Um, so they do have different sensors if you want a longer distance than that. Unfortunately none of the longer distance sensors are weatherproof at this time. So I think we'll be sticking with the sensor that reliably detects people out to about 10 feet and uh, anything further than that uh, would be an issue and what you'll see is that it's quite good as soon as I get to 10 feet it just starts taking photos I back off 10 feet doesn't and you can shut that distance shorter in the software as I, I described earlier another thing you can see is that it's very good about only detecting you when you get really 
on the line, right? It's only about a foot wide, wide line, so um, it helps be really accurate at triggering the camera at the right time. So uh, overall, I'm really happy with this sensor and uh, hope this helps other people who are trying to take this type of photo. And now it's time to test how weather resistant this really is. out if it's still dry inside. Nice. Oh, looks dry. Standard. Go. It's a red one with Look at this little guy we saw while we were shooting. <laughs> 